Yes, what's up? Today, I'm going to talk about five major UX mistakes that a lot of people make when designing forms. The first mistake is overwhelming users with too many fields. So what a lot of people do is like, for example, they have a registration form to their particular application or website or whatever it is or service. And they just require a lot of details from the users upfront. This is a horrible mistake that actually can reduce the amount of people signing up for, for your platform. The more friction you place in this particular sign up process, the more chances there are for people actually bouncing off. So ideally you should only request fields that are absolutely critical for the person to get onto that particular platform. Now, in some cases, there may be other things like, for example, a user's interests or maybe some other thing like, for example, company details or additional details that are not necessarily um, required, but they are very good to have because then you can actually tweak the platform's experience based on, let's say, a user's interest or based on, let's say, the type of music they listen to or anything along those lines. If that's the case, still only ask the fields that actually are required for the registration process and as a next step in the onboarding experience you can ask those additional details but do not stop the user from registering to the platform by asking too many of those things up front so that's one the other mistake that a lot of people do is they actually have a single lengthy form now in some cases like for example immigration forms or let's say when you're filing your tax returns or any other of those things that actually do require a lot of detail for you to fill out that form. A lot of people actually make a mistake of having a, a really huge single and lengthy form. There are multiple mistakes with this. First of all, we don't necessarily want the users to bounce off or feel like the task at hand is really a lot. So it's really helpful to actually break down this task into multiple steps. So for example, uh, what a person can do is, let's say break these different things into different sections. That's obviously gonna allow people to actually go ahead and fill these things out in a sequential manner. But an even better thing is to actually break things out into st separate steps. This particular steps flow actually allow for a lot of different details. First of all, it actually hides the additional information that's required from the user upfront because once the user actually progresses from this page, then they can actually go to the next one. So they don't, they don't have to even visually worry about adding those details. The second good thing about this particular thing is the form can save itself as a person actually clicks on next. So even if, for example, they do not complete that full form, if they've clicked on next, we can actually save where they left off and then continue them from that particular place and location as well. Another major improvement that actually happens as a result of let's say breaking these out into sections is that when you click on next <coughs> we can actually show errors on the fields as well if we want to if we're not doing or inline error detection or error validation we can actually go ahead and show the errors directly here if the form is small it's really easy for them to come back and actually fix those errors otherwise imagine let's say a 20 field form and if a person clicks on submit they have let's say five or 10 different errors that's going to overwhelm the user and they may actually not remember the things that they actually wrote in the above part of the form and then they have to think about it again and again so that's again all of those things are actually going to simplify or going to be simplified and the user experience is going to be much beneficial if you break it down like this the other mistake that a lot of people do is poor error handling and validation now this particular form has so many mistakes with it one major mistake is let's say if a person clicks on register, then the errors actually show at the bottom and a lot of sites actually do this. They don't highlight the error next to the fields and the errors just shown at the bottom. So in order to fix this, we actually have to do multiple things. The first thing that we actually have to do is we have to link the errors to the field so a person can actually see where the error is and which field actually has that particular error but still it's not complete the next thing a person has to do is actually make sure the errors are clear and include an icon now obviously making sure the errors are clear is really important because if for example if you go back to the previous screen it says username is incorrect but i don't know how it is actually incorrect like is it not available did i type let's say um an extra number of characters what exactly is wrong with it very similarly in the phone number like i don't really know what it means to say phone number is incorrect how do i fix it so whenever you're giving an error to the user always make sure that you also help them know how to fix that particular error so in this case i still say phone number is incorrect here just so you can actually see that this particular error is not not fixed but both of these above errors are fixed in this case i inform the user that the username is taken and in the passwords case i identify 
the requirements of that particular password and which part of that particular requirement they are not meeting. It's really important to actually have some of the requirements that they are meeting for a password or any other thing, for example, so that they can actually keep these things and not actually omit them while they're actually changing their password to meet the other requirement. The other thing that I want to point out here is always include an icon next to the error. Do not always rely on color because a lot of people are color blind and color blind individuals may not be able to decipher that particular error just from the border or just from the text. So it's really important to have an icon as well to indicate it. The other thing that I want to point out in terms of a good thing to actually or good practice to actually do a lot of people actually include the error on the right here instead of actually let's say um, just give me one second they actually include the error here uh, or let's say here some some place the problem with this is a lot of let's say password completion fields or let's say applications actually place their element here they place it right here so sometimes if the error actually is here and that particular password widget is actually overlapping it it may be missed out so always try to include the error directly next to the error because if you include this particular uh, icon here and the icon is not here and the check mark is here it's all going to be messy so ideally include the icon for the error right next to the error itself let's go to the next one the fourth mistake is omitting labels from input fields a lot of us actually like modern designs we like to have things clean and a lot of us actually think like why do we actually have to use labels why cannot we just use the placeholders for labels themselves so a lot of people just omit the labels altogether but the problem with that is in some cases it actually creates a problem where the user has to now remember what that particular field was like for example in this case if a person is filling out the passport details okay this is the passport number but what exactly are these two fields is this the issuance date? Is this the expiry date? Or is it something else? What are these two fields? Is it, let's say, my location? Is it, let's say, my passport's location? I have no idea what this is. So a person actually has to remove it to see what that particular label is. And they have to keep on second guessing themselves whether they've actually entered the correct information. In order to fix that, you should actually ideally just transition the labels at the top. This is very similar to what material design does and a lot of different again design systems can actually support this as well. So what you can do is once you actually click on the input field, we can transition the labels at the top and those can always be there. If a person cannot do this, obviously this is a technical challenge. If you're not using material design or if you're not using a design system, creating a field like this from hand by code is going to be slightly hard, especially if you're not using a library. Even then, it's much, much better to actually include something like this where the labels are at the top instead of completely removing the labels altogether. A lot of people may think like this is a really nice experience just having the labels at the top sitting on the input field. But this one still is slightly better in terms of UX because here the label is 12 pixels. Here the label is currently 14 pixels, but it can even be 16 pixels without necessarily breaking the input. But here you cannot make it really large because then it's going to actually start taking a lot of space uh, from the input itself. So again, always include the labels and do not omit them if the value is filled. <clears throat> The last thing that I want to talk about, which is a huge mistake that a lot of people make, is they design their, let's say, forms for desktop. And they have different types of elements that are actually sitting in a column layout. They have the default radio buttons and the default checkbox button and stuff along those lines. They even have custom, let's say, select drop downs that actually work really well on desktop. But unfortunately, a bunch of these things don't actually really work really well for <clears throat> mobile. So you have to make sure that when you're designing things for mobile, a few things you actually have to understand. First of all, make sure that when you're designing things like this, you actually increase <clears throat> the height of the input as well. The, <clears throat> the height of the input shouldn't, let's, let's say, be 32 pixels or even 40 pixels. Try to ideally have a tap area of 44 pixels or 48 pixels for most of these things. You should also increase the text size as well because now you're on mobile and the text sizes on desktop are relatively smaller. Increase your radio button sizes. Ideally also include the radio buttons in one location so a, people, a person can easily access it. And make sure even if you're not, let's say, increasing the radio button to 44 or 48 pixel, make sure the tap area in itself is actually slightly larger so that people with slightly uh, thicker thumbs or thicker fingers can actually easily go ahead and tap those things. And also just start using some of the native elements that actually a lot of applications support. And one other thing that I actually mentioned, so for example, you actually have your country 
And a lot of people actually have the same select dropdown that they used for desktop here, but sometimes that just doesn't work really well, if you, especially if you're using a desktop oriented library. So it's much better that when you actually do something like this, you go to, let's say, a solution where maybe, let's say the bar actually scrolls from the bottom or there's a sheet at the bottom, you can easily search for your country and you can select that particular country. That's one option, but even this requires some investment. So if you cannot do that, ideally just doing something like this is sufficient. This is iOS's default select picker. So even if, for example, on mobile, if you go and you cannot create a separate page or a separate toast or a separate, let's say, bottom sheet for that particular interaction for, let's say, selecting your, your country, just use a simple select box that can obviously be styled to be large and to look good. But if you click on it, the interaction can be completely native and a native interaction is still much better in a lot of, a lot of times than some of the custom libraries that you use for desktop. So those are five big UX mistakes that I think people make in forms and the solutions to them. I hope this video was useful. So do follow me for more UX tips and UX insights to boost your products. Take care. I'll see you later.